a lot of people assume that prior to the advancements of the Enlightenment, there was really no medicine, that nothing could be done for people. But what people tend to forget is that even in the Anglo-Saxon period, we had a number of medical books. Some of these are translations from classical sources, so not all classical knowledge went away. But some of these also seem to be based in indigenous medicine. But a lot of people have dismissed Anglo-Saxon medicine as pure superstition. The recipe contains ingredients such as garlic and onion, and the Anglo-Saxon recipe goes like this. Work ersalva with wenna, ye nem kreopleach, and garliach, bera emfella, ye knua well to somna. Ye nem win, an feris gialan bera emfella. Ye meng with the lecher, do dono an erfet, let stand a new nicht on dam erfet, a ring thui clach. And ye glutre well, do an horn, and um nicht, do mit feathere an ere, se betste lechedum. And this is where our recipe comes from. It is from Ball's Leech Book, which is associated to the 9th or the 10th century. Ball's Leech Book is an interesting recipe. It is not one of those big decorated manuscripts, it's a user's manuscript. It is obviously there for someone to, you know, sort of to handle as an aid memoir, probably. What is interesting about this set of recipes is it gives you alternatives. It has um, a classical distinction. It goes, you know, sort of all over the body. It gives you an idea of um, what you could use, but it doesn't give you the quantities. So the person who is using Bold's Leech Book has to be trained in medicine. It has to be someone who actually knows what they are doing. This doctor could have various choices and made choices depending on a diagnosis. What we also see is that this doctor had to prepare the remedy. You couldn't just um, go to your doctor and say, I'd like this. So obviously they had a pharmacy associated with it. There must have been someone who was also trained in pharmacology. The recipe that we're looking at has been looked at before and people came to the conclusion that it doesn't really do anything. However, it also seems that we're not completely understanding the language of the Anglo-Saxon doctor. As there are no firm quantities of ingredients, we have to understand how people put things together. How much knowledge did they have? Did they have a stock of ingredients? Our recipe, for example, seems to demand a particular type of leek. Um, is that in short, which is in, maybe in short supply in winter? Could this be replaced? Could this be a choice that the doctor made in the winter that they had a different recipe? Could it be that the Anglo-Saxon leech um, had a stock of remedies available? The other thing that of course you know, so we'd like to ask is, is there some specialization? We know that we've got other recipes which for example have a big emphasis on um, gynecology or obstetrics. Is it you know, so that different recipes were used by different people? Bold's leech book has got some imported ingredients. Could it be that there are particular doctors for particular patients? NHS versus private. Um, and what we're hoping with this project is to gain a deeper understanding, not only in the, into the efficacy of these um, ingredients, but also how did the Anglo-Saxon doctor work? And it is extremely exciting to do a project that is so cross-disciplinary and that allows us to look at the question of learning and medical knowledge in Anglo-Saxon England from a very new angle, from a different angle that has been done before. What we now need is some funding to find out more. We have a lot of Anglo-Saxon recipes and what we would like to do is to find out more about the learning and about the knowledge that an Anglo-Saxon doctor possessed.